What's up everyone? Vu of Envu Films, arguably the biggest tube doucher in YouTube history, back with another video. Today I'll be talking about making your FX30 more cinematic. Currently filming with the Sony FX30 right now, and this has nothing to do with making your FX30 cinematic, because I'll be talking about the Su Ray. 35 millimeter anamorphic lens. And you've seen it. You've seen all of the thumbnails, video titles talking about anamorphic and cinematic at the same time. And yes, I get it. The anamorphic look is that wide stretched look that a lot of movies use, TV shows, etc. And of course, there's like lens flare that streaks across the screen and it's made to be familiar to all of you as a cinematic look. But the reality is looking cinematic is not necessarily the lens you're using. It's about the story you're telling, the composition, the colors, the whole nine yards, everything it takes to make a film, that is what is cinematic. It is not what is in the lens. But that doesn't stop us from trying to make things look cinematic by doing surface level things, such as getting an anamorphic lens to look cinematic. I'm gonna just get this out of the way real quick. This lens is built very well. I think it costs around $600 and I'm gonna be completely transparent. Sue Ray sent me this lens purposefully so that I could talk about it with the FX30 because Sony FX30 is a new hotness until the Panasonic S5 came out at $200 cheaper. But that is neither here nor there. Do not pay attention to what I just said. I'm a Sony Alpha Fanboy D-Bag, and, and I'm assuming most of you watching are also Sony Fanboy D-Bags out there, or use Canon, Nikon, Fujifilm, Blackmagic, or whatever else is out there, but you identify as a Sony shooter. And it's okay. These days, you don't have to own the camera. You don't even have to use the camera. It's all about how you feel on the inside. If you identify as a Sony shooter, you are a Sony shooter, even though you've never used the camera, never owned a G Master lens, or whatever. If you identify as a Sony shooter, you are a Sony shooter. That is complete bullshit. With that said, great build quality, whatever. And you're probably wondering why I'm filming so damn close to my ugly ass face. I usually film with a 24 millimeter full frame equivalent for my YouTube videos. So I'm not all up on your screen and you're counting how many daddy long leg hairs I got coming out of my nose. The reason why I'm doing this is show you an example of the difference between a standard 35 millimeter lens on an APS-C camera like the FX30, which is gonna give you a 50 millimeter full frame look. This is a standard lens. This is a, uh, this is a Samyang 35 millimeter F 1.8 VAF uh, lens. And I'm gonna switch from the Samyang 35 to the Su Ray Anamorphic 35. And it'll show you the difference between a standard lens and an anamorphic lens. Now we have the Su Ray 35 Anamorphic lens for APS-C on my FX30. And you can see the difference in the field of view that you're getting. Pretty much, you're still getting a nice squared off look from a quote unquote 50 millimeter full frame equivalent, but you're getting a nice width. You're getting the width of a 35 millimeter full frame equivalent. Um, and pretty much this is what makes it look cinematic. Of course, there's other things such as swirly bokeh and as well as this lens flare you're seeing coming across the screen, chopping off my head. That is also why I have that annoying ass light back there, all up in your eyes. But I have not had many professional gigs to test out the Su Ray lens uh, since receiving it, but I did do a short film about myself, talking about my experience discovering about my ADHD and autism, AKA Asperger's syndrome last year in 2022, which I'll link right here if you're interested in seeing that. It's 2023. As I reflect on the past year, I realize I spent most of 2022 reflecting on my entire life. At times I'd stare at the mirror, not even sure who I was looking at. Early in the year, I was diagnosed with ADHD, predominantly inattentive. It definitely helped shed some light on my many struggles in school, work, 38 years of my life. I used FX30 with the Su Ray 35 anamorphic 
as the main lens for like the opening shots and the shots of, for storytelling purposes, the current timeline where every other shot is pretty much flashbacks uh, of 2022. So all the main timeline shots in that film, and in this case, I was removing Christmas lights out of my house. All those shots were from the Super 8 35 millimeter APS-C and it looked good. I mean, and I thought it looked great. It's just really nice squared off look in terms of like my face, my features. There's not too much distortion, especially if I'm in the center, but it had a really wide look. It showed the environment, even though it's a 50 millimeter full frame equivalent. Um, for all of you who don't understand, Super 35 or APS-C is a 1.5 times crop. So when you get like a 35 millimeter lens for your APS-C camera, it is gonna look more like a 50 millimeter on a full frame camera because of that 1.5 times crop. And if you still don't understand that, that is unfortunate. Maybe you should consider quit videography and uh, do something else. With that said, if you're interested in getting an anamorphic look for your Sony camera or actually any other camera, because I believe this lens has multiple different mounts that you could put on it to put on any other camera as long as it's APS-C to, I think, Micro Four Thirds, uh, now's the best time to do it. FX30 is 1800 bucks, the lens is 600 bucks. You could have a really nice anamorphic uh, setup with a 10 bit 422, 4K60, all of that goodness for around 2400 bucks or so. I mean, just a thing a couple years ago cost a lot more to get an anamorphic look for your films, and now you could have it no problem. And de squeezing the footage is quite easy. In Premiere Pro, all you got to do is select the footage in your media bin and then go to modify and change some settings I'm showing you on the screen because I do not remember on the top of my head. If you're using DaVinci or Final Cut, best of luck to you. I don't use those editors currently. I'm pretty sure you could go on YouTube and find some other tube doucher that will show you how to do it on your Final Cut Pro, but there's also a high chance that they're probably busy in line at Starbucks or you know trying to get the next iPhone or making cucumber juice or not eating meat, going vegan, driving a Tesla, whatever it is they're doing, hopefully you could find one of them that'll show you how to de-squeeze footage in Final Cut. With that said, all because you buy a Super 8 35 anamorphic lens, it doesn't necessarily make your footage cinematic. Yes, it has a similar look to what you see in movies, but footage alone is not cinematic. When you think cinematic, it's cinema. When you go to cinema, you're watching a movie. When you're thinking about movies, you're thinking about a story and it's all about storytelling. In the film where I'm talking about myself and my journey about ASD and ADHD and all that stuff, I really tried to tell a story with the footage that I had. It wasn't trying to like sensationalize my story or make it more interesting than it is. It is just a way for me to express myself properly, to let the viewer feel how it feels like for me during the year of discovering these things after living 38 years of my life, living in this normal world with this quote unquote abnormal conditions that I have and being somewhat successful in terms of the societal standards here in the United States. But there's plenty of people like me with ADHD, ASD that struggle a lot worse or didn't have the blessings and the luck that I had throughout life to get to where I am. And I'm not even like that super successful. I am not rich, you know, I'm middle class. I gotta work to pay for my bills like everyone else. So a lot of people commented saying that that film was cinematic, but it wasn't the shots that necessarily made it cinematic. It was how it was compiled together, the story that was told, the feeling that was created watching that film. And that is what makes something cinematic. It is not the footage. Lenses do assist in telling stories. Like if you put a wide angle lens up on someone's face really close up, their face looks a little bit distorted. It creates some type of mystery. It creates some type of uneasy feeling to the viewer. If you're trying to tell, I don't know, a story about some psycho, get a wide angle lens, put it up right up on his face. He'll look quite creepy, look quite odd, and it'll kind of help tell that story, help create that narrative of something's off about this guy. It's little things like that that make something cinematic and elevate storytelling. It's not just getting a lens that has a nice flare coming across the screen and all of a sudden it's cinematic. 
this is not this shot here is not cinematic. It's just some tube doucher sitting in his office talking to himself in front of a camera. It's what it is. But overall, for a $600 lens, it is well built. It is nice. I can't really think of any downsides to it. Maybe that it's slightly hefty. It is is a pretty it's a pretty heavy lens, and that is not autofocus. And to me, that's a killer because it's really hard for me to get myself in focus um, like this, you know, because I had to try to set focus. I actually don't even know if, while talking if I'm in focus or not. I'm just hoping for the best. But yeah, it would be great if it was autofocus, and it would be great if it was a little bit lighter. But for 600 bucks, it's a steal compared to the cost of most other anamorphic lenses out there. With that said, guys, I hope this video was helpful or at least somewhat entertaining. If you're interested in purchasing the lens or the FX30, links are in the description below, likely affiliated. It'll give me a kickback and that'll be greatly appreciated. As always, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. It'll help a lot. Until next time, lighten up. Hey man, what lens is that? It's the Siri 35 F1.8 APS-C anamorphic lens. You film anamorphic a lot? Nah, man, it doesn't have autofocus and most of the things I shoot require autofocus. Oh my god, you're a trat. If you want to be the bat, if you want to be professional, if you want to be cinematic, you need to film anamorphic. Bro, filming an anamorphic doesn't make it cinematic. Let me show you. Tie up your film look like trat. If you want to be the bad, if you want to be professional, if you want to be cinematic, you need to film anamorphic by my anamorphic matter clad, and you'll be a war winner in one month, only $29.99. I can't wait to see that ad on Instagram. It's cinematic.